MSNBC's Rachel Maddow interviewed E. Jean Carroll on her show this week, who former President Donald Trump is now required to pay $83 million in damages to for defamation. Maddow asked Carroll what she's going to do with the money uh, she's set to receive from the former president. Here's what she had to say. You've talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be, what that might look like? Yes, or, Rachel. Or, yes. Tell me. I had such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? <laughs> it's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? No? Oh, all right, all right. Okay. That's a joke. <laughs> A Although joke. if if me fishing in France could yeah. do something for women's rights, I would take the hit. You know, I would obviously uh, take, take one for the team. I All right, let me let me uh, <laughs> as if as if you need persuasion in that regard. So we haven't. Um, I don't think we've talked about this case super a lot on the show. E. Jean Carroll accused Donald Trump of sexual misconduct from an incident. Long ago, um, she won that civil action, and and then also yeah. was sued him for um, for defamation. Right, I think it was a five million it. judgment, five million dollar judgment for the civil action, and then when Donald Trump continued to say that she was a liar and she was crazy and she made it up, she exactly. sued him for that and won an eighty million dollar judgment. Mm -hmm. So, look, I saw that clip going around on social media a lot. Obviously, I mean, she's joking there. I don't know that the joke quite lands, but she's joking. She has every right to joke. She's entitled to do whatever she wants with the money she got fairly from the jury, as Nikki Haley said the other day. Like, she, the jury is the jury. That's what they decided. So you don't have to like it, but that's just kind of how it works. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I guess I would say, how should I say this? I think her, you know, she has also said, E. Jean Carroll has said that she would do anything in her power to help Joe Biden to defeat Donald Trump. I would say that she has very much leaned into being kind of a political actor in this whole thing, which, again, she can do that if she wants. I think maybe that has lent credence to some people who will just dismiss the accusations as politically motivated and part of just the effort to delegitimize Trump. I'm not saying that's correct or accurate at all, and she's entitled to do whatever she wants, and it really doesn't, it, that's fine. I think probably it would have been better if she had probably not said so forcefully and so frequently that she wants to, to, to help be part of the effort to defeat Donald Trump electorally, why? but she's entitled to do that if she wants. I mean, why? I mean, she's not running for office. Who, she is not concerned about her optics. She doesn't need the public to think anything about right. her. Right. I mean, one for the reason the I other. just said that it will cause people to, to dismiss this as politically motivated. I don't know what that, uh, what that has to do with E. Jean Carroll. I mean, she won her case. She won her, her cases. You know, and there was, of course, there was a meltdown over this uh, Rachel Maddow clip. Um, frankly, I hadn't watched it. I'd, I'd seen people reacting to it, like uh, people just really losing their tops over it. And now having just seen it, I mean, it, look, it's clearly a joke. A woman, from, from her perspective, she was raped in the 90s by the former president of the United States, then future president of the United States. And uh, when she talked about it, he called her a bunch of names about it and attacked her reputation. She sued him, and she won twice in a court of law, and she's taking a victory lap about someone who she says raped her. And the idea that it is somehow that I, my critique should be that the woman who, after decades, gets a win against one of the most powerful men in the world, who she says literally raped her, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of energy. To, she wants to pop off a joke on MSNBC. I have a really hard time um, getting especially angry about that. Uh, it's worth noting that Trump says he's going to uh, appeal this judgment. Um, he's apparently order, uh, interviewing new lawyers. He's not going to stick with his old team for that. So this saga is not by any stretch of the imagination um, 
done. <laughs> Uh, and it'll, it, it'll be interesting to see if there's any um, law firms that want yeah, to Yeah, I actually, on that, on that uh, note, so Alina Habba, his attorney, there has been some reporting this morning that she may have been replaced. Yeah. She might be out. Um, I don't think this has been con confirmed, but I saw some discussion of this on social media, and Newsweek has a headline that she appears to have been replaced. I think this is going off a Truth Social post um, where, yes, we're, okay, here it is, where Trump says, I'm in the process along with my team of interviewing various law firms to represent me in an appeal. Um, so he is not, I think, happy with the her performance. Too yeah. Lost, so. I mean, this 80, $83.3 million judgment follows, of course, Rudy Giuliani being ordered to pay a $148 million defamation judgment against the two African-American women that he accused of uh, stuffing ballot boxes and also being uh, drug mm -hmm. pur purveyors. Um, Fox News obviously having to pay the $787 million uh, lawsuit to Dominion. Alex Jones being ordered to pay $1.5 billion to the Sandy Hook parents, um, which raises some interesting questions about how d defamation seems to be a more dependable route to some kind of, you know, if, you know, substantive justice. I know people feel differently about each of those scenarios and whether or not mm -hmm. the uh, wrongdoer in that scenario really did something bad. Obviously, many people don't believe that Donald Trump ever raped E. Jean Carroll or might think that it's punitive for, I don't know that anybody's really denying that uh, Rudy Giuliani defamed those two women, but some people, I guess, think that the judgment is too extreme. But it, it is interesting that a pattern does seem to be emerging where defamation lawsuits are more successful in creating some kind of accountability, whether or not you think it's deserved, but some accountability for figures unlike other kinds of contexts. Right, because defamation, uh, especially against um, public figures, has in the past been it's a tough, pretty hard to it's a prove. Tough thing to prove, uh, especially in the, in the United States versus other countries. In other countries, even kind of our peer countries, Australia, the UK, it's much easier to prove, and um, the media's there are a lot more afraid of running. Um, provocative stories about celebrities because of the, including in the Me Too category, because of, of how tough it is for you. And historically, that's not been the case in the U.S. So I wonder if um, some kind of shift is underway. We have to look I, I mean, at I, more I do think part of what's happening is that those men in particular acted with such impunity. I mean, it, they weren't fringe cases. Uh, Alex Jones was told again and again, you're putting yourself at risk. Stop talking about this. Obviously, here's the body of my dead child. Please stop. And he not only continued to defame the Sandy Hook families, he earned millions of dollars off of that project, basically sold mugs for their tragedy, you know, proverbially, right. proverbially, and was held accountable for it. Same with Donald Trump. I mean, years. He, he still won't stop talking about um, E. Jean Carroll despite these uh, judgments. It's not just right wing figure. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Mainstream outlets, you know, CNN and a bunch of others had to pay out uh, to the Covington kids. Um, um, Rolling Stone and everybody had to pay out to uh, to um, the the fraternity students from mm -hmm. that story, and, and actually to a dean at the University of Virginia, and so on. So there there is a yeah defamation is yeah, some I, kind I, of rough justice. If, yeah, you know, I, I think um, law firms kind of specializing in that sort of thing are, are getting, uh, th there's more of like expertise in that cat this category like of like fighting the media over unfair statements is um, is kind of coming along and has gotten more professionalized. Well, given that you get a piece of that, uh, <laughs> what, a, a, almost $800 million uh, uh, Fox News judgment or these, these are enormous judgments here. Well, for so the Trump be... and the Giuliani cases, I think it has to make you wonder, you know, when you're giving money to, if you're a Republican donor, you know, you're out there writing your Check to the campaign to help. Are you help? Is this a is this to pay for TV advertisements in swing states to help elect Donald Trump, or is this to help pay the legal bills? Yeah, these, this is a huge problem the, the Republican Party has right now. These these are yearly fundraising average yeah. sized judgments. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see if that actually affects uh, Trump's uh, campaign team at all. Stay with us. We're gonna have more rising for you right after this.